through centre wing. Back turning on Barb. The left foot to centre. Chance for Norwood. A push. And Duncan Fosdyke. Jared Thorpe. Marnie takes his run. Darren Smith. Craig Kelly. Second grab. Taken from behind by O'Brien. A great strength. Thorpe in front. And Chenoweth from that back pocket. Andrew Ops is down very heavily and the stretch has been called for. And that's on the far wing. Thorpe, reversing play. And a strong take to David Hines. Thinks of going back. Greg Phillips is being rested. He was the player injured in the third quarter. And that's a severe loss to Port Adelaide. As John Hall again marks across the centre. Hall to half forward right in the lead of Brendan Maynard won't make it and the Francis can't either and the umpire ruling off time as, uh, as the ops was supposed to be stretched from the ground but he has done a Lazarus and walks across the ground and the umpire will uh, cancel that decision. Ops not quite down and out as the throw-in is in half forward right for Norman. Going into what breeze there is. Brendan Maynard to Francis. Payne. Biachi in over the top. And a stalemate ruled. Bounce at half forward right now for Norman. Port Adelaide really lifted the work tempo in the third turn. Well done, Hines. Marnie favoured by the bounce. And will get a free kick for a high tackle. Marnie using the run of David Hines. Half forward go Port. Ball from behind. Hellier trying to work through. The free kick's gone to Norwood. To Port. Darren Smith. Ginova takes the run. Drives to the lead of Phelps. Good spoil by Warhurst. Kerr interrupts the flow. Warhurst still there. Scanlon and Kerr and the ball will be bounced in the left forward pocket for Port Adelaide. The decision's going with Port Adelaide. Darren Smith off to Geneva, who's been a wonderfully industrious rover. Phelps takes off to Obst. Left forward pocket. Four points in it. And what a fight back from the Magpie. And the next goal is a critical goal for both sides. Ball, neither player. Lester Ross. Well, the stamina of both sides will be severely tested in this last quarter. It's a real finals atmosphere. There's a minor premiership hanging on it for the mighty magpie. John Hall tapping back to Pettit. Kelly. Good movement to Hall. Ducker at the back. Wharton has him controlled. Marnie. Martin Leslie. Short to Harrison. Norwood not able to control Port Space. Kerr off to Harrison again. The dasher shoots for goal to the square. Just offline again. Phil Harrison. Second shot for the quarter. And now there's three points in it. Well, the Magpies look ominous. The run. Short pass. That's not a good one, but Ross gets in front, but there's a free kick against Francis for shepherding out. And David Hutton will be the recipient. So Port could hit the front from a free kick at the seven-minute mark of this final turn for the first time in the game. David Hutton was brought on at half time. The kick, not it's offline, and Big Hall marks it on the last line of defence for Norwood. So the Red Legs by three points. Hall kicks high, not all that much distance. Renton Maynard well down, and the mark paid to Hines or Brendan Maynard. Hines it is. Brendan Maynard thought he had it. Hines drives short. Oh, Darren Smith. Good use of the ball by Hines. And now Darren Smith has the opportunity to put Port in front. He has kicked one goal. That was in the third term. 
little angle to speak of. What breeze there is is at his back. And Darren Smith has kicked his second and Port Adelaide hit the front at the eight and a half minute mark by three points. Well, what a mark by, da by David Hines. All day contesting against two opponents in Hall and Baum and able to come up with the energy for that fly. The kick, the pass off to Darren Smith and the conversion. Smith gradually getting some room to move at centre half forward, although now he's playing off that left half forward flank. Hines opposed to Hall. Francis, Marnie, Hutton. Bounce down. Port by three points, having trailed by 29 at the first quarter, 25 at half time, and 12 at three quarter time. Wide to Harrison. To the forward pocket, and beating Jared Thorpe out of bounds. Now, Phil Harrison's played in the back pocket all day. The Rovers are playing a long way down the ground and that's given him the chance to attack the forward lines. The tap back to Kerr. Can't get clear. Holding the ball. And Roger Kerr failing to turn in on Francis off. And he's going to have a well-earned rest. And for Norwood, Stephen Rowe comes on with fresh legs. Brenton Maynard. Switching it wide, Anderson, who's gone quiet, gives it to McIntosh. Into the space goes the kick. Not well worked. Rodney Maynard has had a quiet one, can't get boot to ball. And it's Ducker in there, but the ball will be thrown into the left forward pocket for Norwood. Uh, the Red Legs have broken down badly across half forward since half time. Hines and Barnes. Barnes tap, row immediately in the action. Hooks towards the goal square and a good mark taken in front by Chenow. Chenow, Rodney Maynard, 15 metre penalty. Chenow will take full benefit of that. Kicks the ball long and that is an enormous kick to the centre wing area. Kelly drops what he should have taken. Hall feeds it through. Rowe, breaking clear, not quite. And will be penalised. And Port Adelaide's urgency is enormous. Harrison now, cleverly around, running clear, ran a long way, allowed to, and kicks through half forward. Not quite Darren Smith. Kelly trying to trap. Ross hands and knees. Warhurst in trouble. Taken down from behind. High tackle, and finally the free kick is given and it will go the way of Rowan Hillier. Well, quite correct, the decision. A lot of pressure, though, from Port Adelaide. They must infringe occasionally. And Phil Harrison really dominant from that back pocket. Chance now for Pettit, a good player in the first half. Leslie at the back for Marnie. Left half forward flank for the Magpies. They lead by three points, and we're 12 minutes into the final quarter. Darren Smith, John Hall. At the back, Abernathy Marnie, the quick kick. In front, Thorpe, the free. He's held O'Brien all day. Chipping short, Pettit. Centre wing. Port Adelaide players, Darren Smith. Oh, made to really earn it by Craig Kelly. But courageous take by the centre half forward. Darren Smith uses David Hines and turn Wayne Marnie. High ball. Getting up high on. Oh, enormous mark by Hodges. Scott Hodges. Soaring up between players for a magnificent mark. And he'll go back and line up for goal number two. And just on taking that kick, Wayne Marnie legitimately shirt fronted by John Hall. But the strength of Marnie in getting up was tremendous. Scott Hodges, 45 degree angle, no distance to speak of. Port Adelaide spearhead has missed to the left. That gives Port Adelaide a four point lead. 13 and a half minutes now played final turn.
Well, Port have got four goals on the board since half-time. Norwood have failed to get a major. Tommy Warhurst goes wide, looking for John Vandermeer. Clear of Marnie. Norwood's turn to attack. Wharton in front of Ducker. Oh, well played. Brenton Maynard. Anderson. Delaney in front. Attack. Fiacci backing up. Off to Schnauer. The fumbles. Good pressure. Leslie. Wide. Harrison. Back to Delaney. Off to Fiacci. There's a bit of confidence in the Magpie. Wide. And John Hutton diving to take the grab. Play on. Set a half forward. Searching. Kelly. Better position than Darren Smith. Warhurst on the overlap. Red leg defence working. David Hines positions. Failed to take. Gets clear. Farms the hand pass out. Well, Hutton. Wide. Darren Smith and Jeff Felt. But in the middle, a brilliant take by Tom Warhurst. He plays on quickly, looking for Pettit up at centre wing. He, and he has been paid the mark. Anticipating then the umpire. Anticipating with the whistle. And Stephen Pettit, the ball. On the half-back line. Kicks high, not all that much distance. Ball gets up high, couldn't control it. Rowe trying to work through. Well-trapped Leslie. Throws it out to the line. Foster hooks to half forward. A wall of players there, and the front man once again will be Tom Ward, will be uh, Craig Kelly. But Norwood not, not doing anything positive at the moment. Kick for kick. Hines gets up. Ducker drops the ball. Hines does it well. Across now for Brown. Time to have a look. Drives deep looking for Darren Smith. Not quite. Good take by the player. And puts it over for a throw in inside half forward for Port Adelaide. Stephen Rowe on for Norwood. David Brown back from the interchange for Port Adelaide. Both sides needing runners. And David Hines tremendous for Port Adelaide. At the back, Ginevra a chance. Got it clear. Quickly to full forward. Rowan Hellier, that's a risky play. Marnie breaks through the forward line. Snap, shoots. It's a goal. Brilliant play, Wayne Marnie. Port, 9-11, 65. Norwood, 8-7, 55. Well, an unforced error. And the Port Adelaide line, which has been built across there since half-time, surging forward. Loose ball, Marnie swoop. And even under pressure, it was an absolute gimme goal for Port Adelaide to go 10 points clear with 16 minutes played and uh, Norwood in trouble. Hines and Barn at the centre circle. Marnie again versus McIntosh. And it will be a repeat performance at the divot. John Hall off. Maynard to go on. Palm into Ruck. Abernethy the big crunch forward. The bounce beating Hellier. He's still got front spot. Taken by Felt. Worked by Darren Smith on the bolt. Goes towards goal and puts it through. Darren Smith's third goal and Port Adelaide to a 16-point lead. The mighty magpie. Abernethy blasting that ball forward. The farm off to Smith, just clear to straighten and shoot oh what a goal six goals to nil since half time, the Magpie 25 points down at the long break, 12 points down at three quarter time and now 16 points clear Hines McIntosh, Abernathy Foster, the tap Vandermeer Farm and the bounce down. 18 minutes into the final quarter. Well, what a comeback from the black and whites. Farm over the top to Hellier. Good pressure from the black and whites. Duncan Fosdyke superbly to, to David Payne wins the free. 
in pain the rover must come back no one on the mark chance for the movement inside harrison inside obs for row overdoing it pressure interception and hines now reversing the play through foster foster to Senawing and brown brown on to darren smith had a little peep but clever enough to get around did it with ease and darren smith drives deep looking for phelps Hodges almost, and Abernethy hooks towards goal, but puts it offline for a point. And the Port Adelaide extend the lead to a very handy 17 points at the 19 minute mark. Well, players who could not get clear in the forward line are suddenly running. Warhurst to Anderson, a busy player in the first half. Well taken by Ducker. Wharton's done well on Ducker. High, slowing down the movement, Delaney, Maynard, McNeil back on, and too high, says umpire Argent, Tim McNeil, goalless, rather kicked the first goal for the day, John Cale, no doubt happy, but a little bit thoughtful, at the back, taken by Brenton Maynard, now he's done quite well in the quarter that he's been on, signs of being able to take strong marks in the forward line 45 meters out a chance to make the distance and the red legs needing their first goal since half time it's a nice looking kick holding up at the back smash forward delaney to the boundary and phelps by the hines oh what fitness david hines has shown 20 minutes, almost 20 and a half, into the final quarter. Left forward pocket for Norwood. Hines getting the body in over the ball. Chanel played on the scene. And another bounce. And the Magpies producing enormous endeavour. Maynard using the body well. But Port getting the numbers. Chanel burrows underneath McNeil. And it will be yet another bounce. 21 minutes played. Fist to the line by Obst. Row there first for Norwood. No help. McIntosh, hard hand pass. He's well caught. Anderson looking for help. Gets it from Brenton Maynard to Row. Infield. Loose is Lester Ross. Down from. He chips across field and Thorpe takes in opposition to Foster. They haven't gained much. Still directly in front. Thorpe goes to the lead of Rodney Maynard, and that's a good mark. That was a better pass from the boot of Thorpe. And Rodney Maynard now on a 45 degree angle. The distance should not present a problem, although the, he is kicking into what breeze there is. Maynard's kick bends offline, and the Port Adelaide. Still lead. The margin, 16 points, 22 minute mark, final turn. Well, 52 minutes almost since half time. The Red Legs yet to goal. Wide for Phelps. Height over Vandermeer. Traps the ball, keeps it in the area. Again, the Magpie through Fiacci. And Port Adelaide's endeavour. Two weeks ago, 30 points down at three quarter time. Got up over the Magpies. Russell Johnson. Greg Phillips in the dugout for Magpies. Anderson. Rowe cannot get clear. Still trapped. Off to McIntosh and that's a push. Gary McIntosh allowed to play on in front of the mark. Wide to Rowe. Coach Neil Barm a little bit concerned about the indirect play of Stephen Rowe as he goes towards centre half forward and Jeff Phelps holds firm looking for Delaney McNeil has the pace and now he has possession Foster pressure good play Foster Delaney Payne Geneva Thorpe and now David Brown must take out back to Foster Players showing signs of tiredness. 
in the Port Adelaide Magpie. A number of players limping. Leslie's limping. Norwood's right half forward flank. Hines. Anderson off to McNeil. The quick kick. Fiachi dropping back takes well. Moves it quickly over to the running Harrison. He's been a big boomer in this final quarter. Through the centre wing area. Long with the kick. Looking for Leslie up in the forward pocket versus Warhurst. Balm over to help out. But Balm's got nothing to kick to. Goes high looking for Brendan Maynard. It was a well-placed kick in fact. Maynard in field, but Palm is set up. Oh, well done by Marnie. Goes short. David Hutton. Half forward, Hutton's kick is long. It's on line. And through for a goal. David Hutton gets the goal, and that is the end of the game for Port Adelaide. 22 points clear, entering time on. Port Adelaide showing more run. David Hutton, the player who attacked the goal face. Darren Smith in position to mark or to protect. Bruce Abernathy walking back to the centre square. Uh, Abernathy and Harrison Hine have lifted in the second half. Darren Smith at across the half forward line, be it centre or the puck or the flank, have been the winning players for the Magpie. Hine still leaping high. Payne. 25 minutes into the final quarter. Port Adelaide by 22 points, having trailed by 12 at three-quarter time. Thorpe, favoured by the bounce. Jennifer applies the tackle. It was too high. Justin Scanlon now chipping up, looking for Francis, who's back on the ground. Cleverly done. To Co-Rover Payne, in trouble. Port Adelaide have got the numbers. Fiachi kicks to the centre wing area, and the ball will beat Brown out. The throw in just ahead of the interchange gate centre wing, as Port Adelaide continue this relentless roll. Bam. Opposition Darren Smith, with Obbs crunching towards the boundary line for a repeat performance on the sideline. Over a minute of time on play, Port Adelaide safe and minor premiership in their keeping. Barnes tapped down, Anderson can't get out, Darren Smith can, does it well. David Hutton now charging through. Bosdyke going against Harrison. Harrison has got the pace, hooks towards the boundary line. Here's another one. It bounces through. Goal number one to Phil Harrison, number 12 for Port. And suddenly they are 28 points clear. Oh, what football from Phil Harrison. A defensive player in the pocket all day. Suddenly the run from defence. Three sorties leading to goals. And then his own in the dying stage. Nine goals to nil since half-time for the Magpies. Hine, Payne, Hine still running, wide to Hodges, no one between him and goals, time to straighten, does, shoots, off line, 12-13, 85 to the red legs, 8-8-56. 29 point lead, Port Adelaide having kicked 8 goals, 9 to Three points from Norwood in this last half. Pettit. High kick, centre wing. Hines steps. Likewise, Maynard up hands, Geneva. Good kick in. Knocked on by Brown. Tapped back by Obbs. Worked towards the boundary line and will be thrown in. About 40 metres around from the behind post. Darren Smith and Craig Baum. Ross trying to work through. Gave it to Thorpe. His kick to centre wing. Port have got the numbers again. Caught with the ball. It's Hines. He gets a free kick for a high tackle. Infield, Marnie. These have been a busy player since half time too. 
allowed to run, kicks it high off the side of the boot somewhat, but still direct enough. Port Adelaide again get the numbers, worked out by Kelly to Fosdyke, goes wide looking for Brendan Maynard versus Chanel, who kicks into the right forward pocket, but bombs in the way for Norwood. Switching the ball wide, looking for Pettit. But Foster gets there with the fist and puts it over the line for throw in. And Port Adelaide have gone. A win by 29 points and the 1988 minor premiership. The Magpies 12-13-85. Norwood 8-8-56. And Jack Cale can be well happy with that performance. It's interesting to note that Norwood led for three quarters, but they capitulated in that last term. In fact, they kicked just one point to Port Adelaide, six goals. A top performance there by Port Adelaide in the late game at Footy Park in front of a huge crowd. And uh, as I say, interesting to note there that Norwood led for most of the day. After the match, Jerry Harrison spoke with halfback flanker, Port Adelaide's halfback flanker, Bruce Abernathy. Bruce, congratulations on a magnificent win and particularly the minor premiership. Thanks very much, Jerry. It was uh, particularly pleasing the way we came back. Well, we could, we could say it was two games. Eight goals, nine to three points in the last half. Could you imagine that of happening? Well, I think uh, at half time we, we looked at ourselves and uh, we really had nothing to lose. So we in, I think we, we did play a different, different style again than we did in the first half. I think it paid off in the end. Well, you're 29 points down at the first change and didn't really make that much impression, although the tide seemed to be turning towards half time. I think probably the second quarter uh, we didn't capitalise is there was a slight wind and uh, I'll probably disagree I'll probably divide the game in the first half and the, and the second half so uh, in that respect I think uh, I'll look at it a bit differently. Well Jack made uh, some good moves yourself into the centre was an important one also Wharton on to Ducker. Yeah as I was speaking to you before though uh, I think it was the people everyone's attitude even even the people who didn't get changed around the ground I think uh, the attitude changed after half time realising we had nothing to lose and that showed out. You're going to keep up uh, keeping the supporters in suspense. Two weeks ago, 30 points down at uh, the final quarter and you came home with the, the wet sail. And now big half. Is it going to build a three quarters? Yeah, I uh, watched that game a couple of weeks ago and I'll tell you what, it's easier playing than watching. The uh, supporters seem to be convinced that there's only two wins left. How do you feel about that? Well, I think that, uh, you know, that's the, the scenario that everyone would like to, like to see. But, you know, we've got a, we've got a week off. We got to train hard, and uh, you know, no getting carried away with today's win. We've still got two games, two wins at least. Well, certainly, that week's rest is going to be important for you. Yeah, look forward to that. Good luck. Thanks very much, Jerry. Port Adelaide halfback Frank, flanker Bruce Abernathy. How important is that rest? Oh, I think it's very important. Like as I said in the early show, they only have to win one game now, and they're assured of a uh, berth in the grand final, which is tremendous. The thing that amazes me is the way that Port Adelaide just keep on winning. And they've consistently won the big games this year, which is, it's a huge factor coming up to the finals. And you look at their scoreline, they're down 29 points quarter time, 25 points half time, 12 points at three quarter time, and then they just <coughs> completely steamrolled Nord in the end. Kim, they've won, I think it's seven out of eight at Footy <coughs> Park, which is a huge advantage, isn't it? Well, it certainly is, because as we all know, that's where the finals are played. But uh, I probably haven't given Port Adelaide the credit they deserve this year. I've been a little bit wary of them, basically, I suppose, because of the <coughs> unknowns they have in the side. When you look at players like Wharton, Chenoweth, Foster, Hutton and Brown, they're not really household names, but they, they just keep putting in every week. And if you remember, Mark, a couple of weeks ago, you thought I was trying to crack a joke when I said about when Russell Johnson, he was the talk of the town when he was uh, <coughs> suspended. Are you right there or are you gonna yeah, die? Right. you're not going to pass away on me? <laughs> <laughs> keep going. You keep talking. Okay, I'll then. have a drink. All right, then. Anyway, as we mentioned, and I tried to say to Mark that no one's indispensable, and as usual, I didn't quite get the words to come out as I wanted. And we were fortunate enough for Mr Don Stark from Millicent to send in a little bit of literature, which I think is worth reading. Good on you, Don. And, uh, yeah, and it relates to the fact that no one is indispensable, so if you can just bear with me, I'll try and read it better than I do the news. <laughs> sometimes when you're feeling important, sometimes when your ego's in bloom, <laughs> sometimes when you take it for granted, you're the best qualified in the room. Sometimes when you feel that you're going would leave an unfillable hole, just follow this simple instruction and see how it humbles your soul. Take a bucket and fill it with water, put your hand in it up to the wrist, pull it out and the hole that's remaining is a measure of how you'll be missed. Excuse me, you may splash it all you please when you enter, you can stir it up, up the water galore, but stop and you'll find in a minute that it looks quite the same as before. The moral in, the, is the, in this quaint example is do just the best you can, be proud of yourself, but remember there is no indispensable man. Thank you Shakespeare. Ugh. And the reason that I wanted to, to read that out was because so many people were writing Port Adelaide off when Russell Johnson was uh, suspended for five games 
And the man that's taken his place, David Hines, has been sensational. Thank you, Kim, very much indeed for that, and thanks to the gentleman who sent that in.